When I asked people what their first computer system was, this system, the TI-99-4A, comes up quite often. You might think that was because this system was a big success, but no. The reason so many people had this chrome beast as their gateway drug was that it failed and went on extreme clearance. Let's find out why that was. Hey guys, it's Jacob with Tech Retrospective. Today we're going to be taking a look at the TI-99-4A. Oh, and before we get started, make sure to join our Discord server, okay? All right, let's get started. While TI, or Texas Instruments, is most well known these days for their stranglehold on the US calculator market, they have been at the forefront of semiconductor and microchip development since their founding in 1951. TI has actually been involved in the creation of many consumer electronics, from radios to watches to the iconic speak and spell. TI saw the success that companies like Apple and Radio Shack were having with the new home computer market, and much like another calculator company, Commodore, decided they could easily convert their calculator tech and produce a home computer. That computer was not the TI-99-4A. It was actually the earlier TI-99-4, with no A's, released in 1979. This system did not sell very well at all, and is now rather rare. In a lot of ways, it's similar to the 4A, but with some drastic differences, like the pretty, terrible keyboard, a much weaker graphics chip, and a frankly ridiculous cost of $1,500. By 1981, it was pretty clear that sales of the TI-99-4 were going nowhere. TI announced a new model fixing many of the system's issues and dropping the price by two thirds to $525. This model, the TI-99-4A, sold much better than the original, but overall did not make much of a dent on the sales of TI's competitors' machines like the Commodore VIC-20, the Apple II, or the Atari 8-bit line. Some of our staff can remember desperately trying to talk prospective computer buyers out of getting a TI-99-4A in late 1983 because of TI's sales strategy. It was announced in October 1983 that only the MS-DOS-based Pro versions would continue, but remaining 4A inventory would be sold for the outrageous price of $49. The hope was that if TI could get enough computer systems in the hand of consumers, it would be able to make up for some of its losses by increasing software and peripheral sales. The problem was, TI did not produce much desirable software for the TI-99, and third-party developers were discouraged from doing so because TI retained so much legal control over licensing. Pulling a Coleco there, huh, TI? As a result, scores of consumers were left holding the bag, so to speak. Many were never able to realize the full potential of their ultra-low-cost systems, despite their formidable hardware profile. Let's go over the specs. You'll get the TMS9900 processor, the first 16-bit processor ever included in a home computer, more on that later, the graphics adapter, the TMS9918A, a graphics chip, which was also used in the Coleco Atom, and the Sega SG-1000, which was very good for 1981. And 16 kilobytes of RAM. TI chose the TMS9900 processor as it was really easy to convert it from their existing professional mini computer, the TI-990. Now having a 16-bit processor when that wouldn't be commonplace for years sounds like an amazing thing, but it's one of the primary reasons this system failed. The fact is, nobody was ready for home 16-bit processors, including TI. In order to keep costs down on the system and because technology simply wasn't ready for it yet, only the system ROM and first 256 bytes of RAM were accessible from a 16-bit data path. 
Had the system been designed to take advantage of a 16-bit data bus, it could have had addressing for 65,536 bytes. What's so bad about this is that all other data from RAM or ROM cards had to first travel through an 8 to 16-bit multiplexer, reducing communication speeds with the CPU drastically. Not only did that make the processor run slower in most tasks than competing 8-bit processors, it also made programs harder to make compared to 6502 or Z80-based systems, which were fairly easy to port between. That plus TI's tight grip on publishing meant that the 994A had very little third-party or homebrew software made for it during its lifetime, meaning TI had to provide nearly all of the system's library themselves, which mostly came in the form of simple games and educational software with a notable lack of productivity software. The other problem with the CPU choice was that the CPU and related components were more expensive to produce. You can even see that in the design of the system. Why fill your system up with a bunch of expensive ports and expansion slots when you can produce a single multi-use expansion bus that can be daisy-chained? That meant that power users either needed a long desk for all the expansions coming out of the right side, which kind of reminds me of some expansions for the PC Junior, or they could buy the separate purchase of a peripheral expansion box. Basically, eight expansion card slots with a disk controller card, RS-232 interface card, and 32K memory expansion included in a separate box. And you really would want to fill those expansion slots up. There are some really cool expansion options like disk drives, memory expansions, and most cool, speech synthesis. On the front of our system, you'll see the keyboard and the cartridge port slash coffee warmer. On the side is the single expansion slot. On the other side is the joystick port. On the back is the cassette port, power in, and the monitor port. Our 4A was a donation from our good friend Elliot. It was his childhood computer. Thanks, Elliot. The 4A saw multiple price reductions to try and compete with the VIC-20, with the system eventually selling at a loss for TI with the hope that they would make money back with the sales of software and expansions. It didn't work, with TI ultimately losing over $400 million in the computer industry before canceling the line in late 1983, selling off the rest of their stock to clearance retailers which is where many people acquired their systems. Not even TI's celebrity spokesperson helped them sell the line as was common at the time. Commodore had great success at the time by having Captain Kirk himself tell you how great they were. Who did TI get to sell their computers? Oh. Ooh. Uh, moving on. The 4A also received a redesign in mid-83, replacing its case with a much cheaper, drabber, beige plastic case with a cheaper motherboard. It has some subtle design improvements, including a much improved power switch and a better feel to the still slightly cramped keyboard. Since TI was selling the system for a loss to try and compete with other manufacturers, they had to rely on software and accessory sales to break even. Since they made more when a consumer bought TI's first-party software versus a third-party smaller licensing fee, TI made a move I like to call the Keurig. The beige model only allows users to play official TI software, a decision that is baffling. Which would you rather buy? A VIC-20 with a wide array of software and cartridge, cassette, and disc from Commodore, third-party publishers, and bedroom programmers? Or the TI machine with its extremely small library of TI-made education programs and games? Before researching for this video, I actually had no idea that the revised model existed. After learning that fact, we picked up a pretty basic bundle of the revised model on eBay for 50 bucks. After the failure of the 4A, TI intended to sell several other related systems, but none ever materialized. That said, they did sell IBM-compatible laptops until selling their computer line to Acer in 1998. 
And now for the ratings. Rarity gets a 3 out of 5. Generally, this system isn't that rare with just under 3 million sold, but the revised model is actually a lot harder to find, and these systems are pretty rare outside the US. Price gets a 4 out of 5. These systems are very cheap. Aesthetics gets a 4 out of 5 for the original model, and a 3 out of 5 for the revision. The black and chrome color scheme is timeless. Cheap beige plastic, not so much. Software gets a <laughs> You know what, I was gonna give it a one out of five, but actually, let's give it a negative 10,000. There's not that much still worth going back to on this system, unless you really like simple educational software or are a diehard Parsec fan. Ease of repair gets a two out of five. Parts are obviously pretty non-standard and aren't really worth hunting down. Additionally, a good majority of systems sold online are sold as not working or untested. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure that you don't forget to subscribe. We've got so many other cool videos coming out in the future. Let me know which computer you'd like to see on a first look video next, and you can join our Discord where you can tell me, did you have this system? Or did you have this system? or neither. And of course, if you'd like to support us, we can buy more useless junk like this thing right here. You can support us on Patreon. And I'll see you guys next time.